you don't want to accept that this problem exists. And I told you it exists. And you're uh, and your people. And your solution to it is a non-solution. It's either push for a massive cultural shift or send some yes. dudes in there, bruh. You sound like you're high <laughs> right now, dude. At the end of the day, we have kids that are waiting for families that are not getting adopted by heterosexual couples. And there and that's is not a, a bad thing. There is a group of people that are more likely to adopt and raise those children. And you're saying no. Because why? Because they're gay. Right. Yeah. You don't go. You so don't you have no reason here. You're just falling back on. Tonight, we are debating gay adoption. We have Hunter Avalone crossing swords with James Hake of The Hake Report. And going first tonight, we have Hunter Avalone. So I will turn it over to him for his five minute opening statement. Hunter, the floor is all yours. Thanks very much, and thank you, Hake, for uh, returning for a rematch debate. I do want to point out quickly, my shirt says, no soy. So for anybody in chat calling me a soy boy, you are officially not allowed to call me a soy boy because my shirt says no soy. So you literally, it's it's impossible for you to call me a soy boy. Anyway, when we're talking about gay adoption, um, this is definitely a very controversial issue, but at the end of the day, we have so much data which shows that children raised by gay parents fare just as well, if not better, than children raised by straight parents. Um, whether we're talking about performance in school, whether we're talking about the emotional stability, whether we're talking about socioeconomic circumstances, no matter what factor you measure for, gay people, or excuse me, children tend to do better when raised by uh, gay parents. Furthermore, there are currently around 120,000 children every year who need to be adopted. And although there are a lot of younger kids that are, are primarily adopted, usually about 50% of all adoptions are children under five, there are also teenagers and disabled kids who are currently in the foster care system that desperately need a home and they are considered hard to place because they're older, they have disabilities, it's harder to find them an adopted family. However, gay people, LGBT individuals, are more likely to adopt hard to place children. So according to a chief executive of New Family Social, data from the National Register, the national database of children available for adoption and approved adopters waiting for children, shows that LGBT people are more willing to consider adopting hard-to-place children. This is really crucial because where a lot of heterosexual couples are interested in adopting due to fertility issues, gay people are interested in adopting in a different sort of way. They are really looking to start a family, even if it is considered non-traditional. This is really beneficial for the child. And uh, just to go through really quickly these uh, some of these studies here, we can look at over three decades of peer-reviewed research, which shows that having gay or lesbian parents does no harm to the child. There are other studies that are much newer that also indicate the exact same thing, that children raised by uh, same-sex parents from birth perform better than children raised by different sex parents in both primary and secondary education. And according to, uh, uh, I'm not sure which one this is, this is American Sociological Association, excuse me, we conclude that there is clear consensus in the social science literature indicating that American children living within same-sex parent households fare just as well as those children residing within different sex parent households over a wide array of well-being measures, academic performance, cognitive development, social development, psychological health, early sexual activity, and substance abuse. Our assessment of the literature is based on credible and methodologically sound studies that compare well-being outcomes of children residing within same-sex and different-sex parent families. Now, I'm sure we will get more into the nitty-gritty of this, but overall, the consensus is clear. Children raised by gay parents fare just as well. Gay parents are more likely to adopt hard-to-place children who desperately need a home. So at the end of the day, we're talking about benefiting children or we're talking about restricting children from having a loving home on the basis of nothing except for bigotry against gay people. And ultimately, we're basing that on feelings. All right. Thank you so much, Hunter, for your opening. And we'll kick it over to Hake for his five minute opening. Hunt, Hake, your right. first word. Well, great to see you again, Kaz. And great to see you too again, Hunter Avalone. And shout out to the modern day debate chat and modern day debate. It's excellent. Um, gay adoption, I say no. And I think that all common sense thinking normal people know, even the, the sensible gays themselves know that it's a no. A family is a married father and mother with their own children. 
um, marriage and family experts don't know this because the intellectual world, including academia and science, has forgotten common sense and they've gone into, um, oh, nothing is real except for what you make it. Children want their own real parents, though. Even, even adopted children, it's bad enough to be adopted by normal Christian parents who are decent and loving. A marriage is a, is a man and a woman coming together to start a family. And if they can't help themselves, maybe they get married just because they want to have sex. But that's gross, and that's not the right way to do it. It's best to be self-controlled. Um, Same-sex couples, quote-unquote couples, cannot have children on their own. They have to go outside of it. That's why they have the, um, the, the adoption thing and the artificial insemination, the surrogacy and all that. But homosexuality is not about love or family. It's about sex. The homosexuality aspect of it is about sex. And yes, all people are looking for love. So they try to have this, try to go back into this traditional world with their, with their immoral and, ab and unnatural way of being. But so they, they go looking for it in one another. They go looking, you know, the, the gays come together and go looking for love for one another. But just like men and women commonly, they end up just getting screwed instead. They don't love one another. There's higher instances of uh, even acknowledged mental illness among the so-called LGBTQ so-called community and higher instances of so-called domestic violence between lesbians and many others in that world. Um, domestic violence, like I said, is prominent, especially am also among the transgenders, I believe. Um, there was a viral photograph, just to give a little example, of a black boy at a Black Lives Matter protest back in like 2014 in Ferguson, Missouri. He was hugging a cop with tears streaming down his face. It turned out he was adopted by one of these nicey nice uh, two supposedly white lesbians who had, I guess, thought that they were married and they adopted a bunch of black kids and they thought they were do-gooders in the world going to Black Lives Matter protests after Mike Brown, the gentle giant, got uh, shot and killed in self-defense. But come to find out, some of, those, some of their kids were starving. They were going hungry in these uh, lesbian couples' homes. Home and... Later on, these, this lesbian couple drove their kids off a cliff. This is an extreme example, but it shows you the, the derangement and the mental, mental and truly spiritual illness that infects these people. And it's bad enough when so-called straight people are all into sex and not into actually loving and overcoming and having self-control. But to add this is, is just adds to the cruelty towards children. And it shows that People don't really care about children. They care about their own ego and having this notion of a family. Homosexuality and transgenderism and all that stuff, prior to the gay hype of the 1970s and the sexual revolution of the 60s, it was known that this is a spiritual and mental illness. But then uh, with the gay agenda and so many other things, women taking over, we've replaced truth with emotional intellectualism where we, we hide be, behind, um, you know, studies and statistics and pretend like, pretend like that can define right and wrong. And really, you have to see for yourself. We saw the gay agenda infiltrate science and academia and medicine. Um, children know it's wrong. Even, when, uh, even those children who have been raised in gay families, when, when everybody's celebrating it all around them, they still know that something is wrong so frequently. And that's why you see that. You see that even in San Francisco. JLP, Jesse Lee Peterson, whom I work with, has counseled uh, people like this. And it's, it's reality and it's uglier than what the statistics that Hunter has expressed shows. So I say no. All right. Um, I think we're right. good from there. There's, a, there's some... There was some noise in the background there. That's my cat. Sorry. All right. Thank you so much, Jake. I'm uh, just fixing this uh, timer real quick, and I'm going to turn it off. 
and that's done. All right. So want to let you know, folks, especially if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, that this is a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion and politics. And we want you to feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from. And if you have a question for or comment for one of tonight's debaters, fire into the old live chat and be sure to chat, tag me at Modern Day Debate. Super chats will go to the top of the list. Um, and please, uh, please keep it civil. Uh, to attack the argument and not the person uh arguments um i'm sorry uh personal attacks will not be read uh insults will not be read uh keep it civil um uh, and that goes for uh comments to each other and to the moderators as well we uh really appreciate the moderators for elevating the discourse in the live chat they will be uh taking people out for any kind of hate speech as well um all we ask is that you keep it civil our guests are linked in the description below as well on youtube or in the podcast if you're listening on the podcast if you like what you're hearing so please click on their links if you like that and um hit the subscribe button and the like button share the video and we have a lot more debates coming your way uh we also uh uh, yeah, that's about it. So we'll go ahead and kick it into the open discussion for one hour at your first word, gentlemen. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I wrote down kind of like the first debate. I wrote down some stuff that Hake said, and I think maybe we can kind of take it from there. So oh. it, it seems, correct me if I'm wrong, but this seems to be your main contention about gay adoption is that a family is supposed to be a married father and mother, uh, that homosexuality is unnatural. And there is mental illness among LGBT individuals um, and that we've kind of replaced truth and common sense with emotional statistics. Yeah. And one other thing that children want their own parents. So when you say let's start with that. So when you say children okay. want their own parents, I agree with you. Children do want their own parents. But if they are in an unfortunate circumstance where they are orphaned or in the foster care system, then isn't the better move for them to get adopted? Would you agree with that thus far? I suppose so. So if they're okay, good. So we're on the same page then that obviously getting adopted is not as ideal as having your own parents necessarily. But if you are put in the foster care system, it's better to be adopted than stuck in the foster care system your whole life. So when you say that a family is a married father and mother, a family can be a married father and mother. But why can a family not also be two dads or two moms? Why does it have to be a father and a mother? Because that isn't what creates a family. It naturally, naturally, a married father and mother will will um, will have their sex, and then and then have their children, and that's just what naturally it's it's uh, God's design, if you will. Well, we've or already it's nature's design, if you will. Haven't we already kind of established though that obviously, like kids come from a, a male and female having sex, of course, but they're in the foster care system already. So the 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 option here is either get adopted or stay in the foster care system, especially if you are an older child or you're dealing with disabilities. What's wrong with getting adopted into a loving family that might be a gay family? Because I think that we will have an agreement in the sense that a nuclear family is by far the best environment for a child. Two parents married that love each other in a stable socioeconomic situation, raising the child is by far the best circumstance. But where we disagree is, I think a nuclear family can be two gay guys, it can be two lesbian moms, or it could be a man and a woman. I say no to that. I mean, if there are problems with the foster care system, usually a foster families are supposed to be a father and a mother who agreed to do this type of service. So if there's problems with it, we fix the foster system and not, um, and not go to this adoption by the abnormal you know the the gays and the lesbians and the transgenders but if the child is already less likely to be adopted by a say a heterosexual couple due to the fact that they're either older or disabled and heterosexual mm -hmm. couples are usually trying to adopt because they're having fertility issues of their own right it seems as if we're kind of down to a dichotomy where we have to choose between letting a child who's disabled or getting older grow up the rest of their life or the rest of their childhood in foster care system or let them actually have a kind, loving family who might be gay. I don't understand but how this is about. But how is in with that question, why is a foster family not a kind, loving family? A foster family is a kind, loving family. But what I'm saying so is then why that, do you need to switch it, switch it over to the because I don't I don't necessarily think that a foster family is worse than an adoptive family. So well, okay, let, let me let me go back then. Obviously, okay. when I'm talking about foster parents, 
Sometimes mm -hmm. foster parents, they will foster a child for a little while before going on to fully adopt them. Other times it, it's not the, the case. Either right. way, if we're talking about children in the foster care system who are currently in need of a home, they're not being adopted or taken in by other foster families if they are uh, disabled or if they're getting older. Once you reach the age of around eight, your, your chances of getting adopted or taken in by a foster family significantly decline. So once that's the case, and we know that LGBT people are more likely to adopt or to foster children that are kind of hard to place, then why would we be against that? We would want kids to be in a, a loving family, right? Uh, yeah, but there is no love in that home. It's not, it's not, it's not real love. I mean, it's, there's no love in most homes, but it's not real love. They aren't, they aren't doing it out of, they're doing it out of a good, the do-gooder mindset. That's why you see them, you know, my, my suspicion about your statistics about how they're the gay the children do better under um under the so-called same-sex couples mm -hmm. is that they're more well-to-do they have this do-gooder you know a little bit upper class um liberal mindset well to be and clear so, you're gonna probably be a little bit more upper class or at least in a pretty stable socioeconomic situation if you're going to be adopting or fostering a child because right. that's one of the requirements so I don't see how this is a bad thing. We're talking about a child or a teenager who's in need of a home. Why would we be against gay people taking that person in? You're asserting their motives. How do you know that's their motives? There are probably a lot of heterosexual individuals that want to uh, adopt children out of the goodness of their heart. I don't yep. know how that's a bad thing. If people are doing something out of the goodness of their heart, that sounds like a pretty good thing. It's not out of the goodness of their heart. They don't have goodness in their hearts. People don't have goodness in their hearts. They have an ego, and they do this for their own selfish fulfillment. But I don't and think that's so necessarily a bad thing. It kind of reminds me of a Bible verse, actually, where, uh, who was it? Was it Paul who talked about even if somebody is sharing the gospel with selfish motives or bad intent, as long as they are sharing the gospel and getting that message out there, that's good, even if their intent is is flawed. I would say even if their intent is screwed up, even if I were to grant you that and say, yeah, sure, let's say that their intent is, uh, you know, it, it's just that they, they're motivated by ego or something. Is that necessarily a bad thing? If they're giving a child a good household and the child is doing just as well as if they were raised by straight parents, why should we be against this? I don't, I, I really, sus I'm suspicious of the statistics like, I, like I've indicated before. I think that I've heard that, um, there's research that shows that children who are raised in these so-called same-sex um, households, they end up with similar issues that children of of single parent, like, you know, the single children of single mothers have. They have more addictions, more suicides, more crime, and more all kinds of mental health issues and education and all that stuff. Um, so I would be, it's funny that you say that you're highly suspect of the statistics because what it sounds like you're referencing there is a 2012 study that claimed children do poorly when raised by gay parents. But if you actually looked at the methodology of that study, it was deeply flawed. It was also funded by a group that was trying to get certain results. And basically, the study was just looking at unstable couples who they classified having a uh, homosexual parents. They classified that as a straight couple having a child and then one of those people whether it was the man or the woman coming out as gay and then leaving the family they what counted that but they counted that as raised by a gay parents that's not what <laughs> being raised by gay parents is being raised by gay parents is you are taken into a family where there are gay parents who are already married they're already in a stable environment and they want to take a child in they're more likely to take kids in that are not finding homes elsewhere I, but they I, you're not you're do, not explaining they, to me why this is a bad homes. thing. No, their they home do, is they, in the foster care system. Right, exactly. Fix the foster care system. So what if you're you advocating, have, if people, you have this big problem with the foster care system. Well, okay, there's this is a multifaceted issue then, dude. You can fix the foster care system, but people have been trying to fix the foster care system pretty much since it started. So we can do that, but that's a much longer process. By the time the foster care system is quote unquote fixed, those children are going to be adults. They will have lived their entire childhood without a family and they would have been raised in the foster care system. And if you want to talk about poor outcomes, kids raised in the foster care system do 
terribly, whether we're talking about substance abuse, cognitive abilities, uh, academic performance, they do terribly really across the board. So I, I, I know I keep kind of going back. I'm not to... surprised. I'm not surprised to hear that because they, they get subsidized, you know, by the, by the government. So there's greedy people who get involved in this game and you have just like with the uh, biased st study that, that you allegedly debunked the, so the uh, whole academic world and science science world is biased toward being politically correct and politically correct right now no. says don't say anything negative about the gays don't That's show not anything negative about the, the gays. study yes, came out and, no no the study totally came out true. in two, hold on the study came out in 2012 that said a lot of negative shit about gay people but upon actually reviewing that study even an internal audit by the same journal that originally published that study came to the conclusion that the study was complete bunk it was bullshit. I accept, I accept that that may have been debunked, but I'm talking about the studies that you're citing because you're pretending that, that gays can do just... You're actually make, making the claim that gays, gays raise the kids better than the real parents do. No, not you're better, actually, but just as well. If not yeah, better, just in certain, not, in just certain as well, circumstances. If not better. In some circumstances, yeah, usually yeah, exactly. academic performance. Academia. So what a mess. Let's go back, though. Because we, we yeah. keep kind of getting stuck on the same thing. I want to move on to the unnatural point. Okay. But you're, you're advocating against a child being taken in by a home, by parents that love them, because of what? What is the reason here? I don't understand. You keep saying, well, maybe the studies are flawed. Okay, maybe they are, but you haven't offered any evidence of that. Meanwhile, we have three decades of peer-reviewed research. I don't think that three <laughs> fucking decades have all been flawed. And I think that to assert that, you'd have to actually be more delusional at the end of the day. Like, I think that you need to answer the question, really. Why? Why should children who are disabled or getting older be denied a loving household by gay parents, what is the you don't answer? Even know what, you don't even know what love is. That's not. I a don't loving need you household. to explain love to me, Hake. I need you to answer you, my question. Why did you bring it up? Because when I, I say loving, what I'm talking about is a family that is going to take care of them, a family that is going to give them the same opportunities as a straight uh, uh, as straight parents, and where all available research shows that they do just as well as straight uh, or as kids raised by straight parents. You're not answering very... this question. You keep pivoting. You're like, let's talk about what love is. When I'm talking about love, I'm talking about positive because outcomes, I'm, positive environment. So why should a child be denied that? It's not love. It's not a family. And it's trying to brainwash children and brainwash society into accepting wrong is right. Hold on. You haven't you have not even explained what makes this wrong yet. We're just on the first topic yet. We're still on the first topic. You're, you're essentially okay. telling me that okay. you're Let against me disabled. What's, what's wrong Hold on, this is, I just want to make this clear that this isn't like All an right. optics win for me here, okay? This is you denying uh, good households, positive environments, and positive outcomes to disabled children because gay people make you feel uncomfortable? What is your answer here? Why should this be – why should gay people be de uh, denied a loving household? It's uh, – it's, that's not a loving household. It's not a family. Like I said um, – you're you're acting like it's a you're you're acting like you're bringing up like a false dilemma of like they they won't be taken care of at all, but you're feeding them into a world where um, where they're gonna have these gays trying to brainwash these kids into saying oh this gay thing it's okay. Well, and that's, that's a whole other discussion that I'd be happy to get into in a second. That that's part there of is the some, issue. There's nothing wrong with being gay, so we can we can go yes, on to that is. in a minute, we, but we. We so all so know hold on, because you so because you're factually incorrect when it comes to the issues of gay people, you think that children who are older, who are far less likely to get adopted, the dichotomy that I'm presenting here is not some fictional dichotomy. It is a yes, fact. No, it's not. It is a fact that once you reach the age of eight and onward, your likelihood of getting adopted sta staggeringly decreases. OK. And what's wrong so, with that? Well, I thought we were in agreement that we don't want children to have to grow up in the foster care system. No, I'm that... fine with that. So you're okay with kids growing up in the foster care system rather than gay parents? Yes. Okay, so what you're telling me now is that you don't actually give a single shit about the outcomes of children. Not true. Well, if you you're did, you're the one you... who doesn't care about them. No, if you gave you wanna, even a you single fuck about... You want to feed the gays' egos. No, you I'm not trying to feed anybody's egos. Listen. And pretend like to <laughs> demonize the foster care system. My dude. 
you're now telling, yeah. I'm not trying to demonize the foster care system. I'm looking at this legitimately and I'm looking at this as the fact but of the matter. Your people, your people are on. the ones running the foster care system. <laughs> no, they're and not. And now your First people of... are going to run the, run the gate. And your household. people are the types of people now that are de denying disabled children households that would uh, raise them, possibly no, would... show them love and present them with just as good outcomes as if they were raised by straight parents. You're so against you all claim. of this. Nah. -uh. Yes. So you claim. Wait, wait, wait. We need to stay on this one subject before we move on. All right. Go ahead. Do you admit or not, yes or no, that being raised in the foster care system is by far less than ideal? Yes, I admit that. Okay. So I doubt you're going to then admit that it is definitely better or preferable, I will say, to have a family over being raised in a foster care system. It's best to have your family, yes. Okay. We have already established the fact that they don't have their family anymore. That's why they're in the foster <laughs> care system. Right. So again, we're back to the same thing I just said you were doing, which is denying the possibility for a child to have a household that treats them with respect, gives them equal opportunity because gay people make you uncomfortable. But that's you're you're making up a scarecrow. It's be, you're claiming because gay people make me uncomfortable. That's not that's not what I'm arguing. We all know that gay is wrong. No. There's something wrong this with it. This is what I mean. You're, you're, you're always falling back on your own feelings that being gay is bad. Obviously, it's wrong. No, it's not. It's because you think that, that now you're willing to literally put children, no, no, everybody... disabled kids in a negative environment where they are more likely to be abused, more likely to do drugs just because you are misunderstanding gay people. You don't no, care about I'm the kids. No, I'm not misunderstanding them. You don't care about kids. You don't care about kids. And nor do the gays. Really? Then why am I advocating for better outcomes for children and you are advocating to keep them in the because foster care system? It's a pretense. You, you have 30 years worth of people pretending that this is right. Actually, more like 50 years or 60 years if you go um, to the 60s. Because this is – but prior to this, everybody knew that this was wrong. And you don't go to an abnormal to solve a problem. What you're doing is, sol is uh, trying to address the symptoms. If you wanted to address the problems, we would return to actual families. But no, your side is for That's, the destruction of the family. No, I'm, and your side all, I'm is not in favor of government subsidizing. Your side is for government subsidizing these uh, foster fa uh, foster homes, which only feeds into the corruption of them. Hold on. And you're also for the subsidizing of the of the gay agenda. I'm not in favor of subsidizing the, any gay agenda. I don't even know what that means. But you literally just said pretending that. Hold on. Making everybody go along with it. You said, hey, yeah. we should really be focusing on fixing the foster care system, but now you're against subsidizing the foster care system? Yeah, subsidizing it is not fixing it. That's true, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Part of no, the problem, it's not. Hold on. Part of the problem is the strapped budget that they have. No, man. You, okay. I mean, you I can just say no, but what you're, you're falling back because on then is you, that we once thought that being gay was bad. We no longer do, so therefore we were right before, but we're not right now. Why couldn't we apply this logic to any other thing that has changed? For example, people used to say the right belief is that the earth is flat. Now we know that the right belief is that the earth is round. Now, I don't know what you believe, but I'm assuming you're not a flat earther. If that's the case, like we're not going to just cling to archaic beliefs. This is what scientific research and scientific literature is. It develops and it changes and it gives us better results and gets more and more accurate. No, you're, you're mistaken. What's what's scientific about about homosexuality? They can't even have act, real actual sex. OK, you, you think you're smarter than <laughs> nature and nature's God. So it seems as though you're really appealing then to the fact that it's unnatural. Am I correct? Uh, it's unnatural and it's immoral. It's it's wrong to call wrong right and to brainwash children into this agenda as well. So it's, I would argue that uh, it's pretty immoral to deny disabled children the opportunity to be raised by a family that will treat them with respect and dignity and give them equal opportunities uh, on the basis of the fact that they're gay. That would be uh, immoral in my opinion. But that's we posturing. Can, we can. It's not posturing. It's literally yes, it my is. position that you're fighting against right now. But let's go back to what you just said then. Unnatural and immoral. OK. What do you mean by it being unnatural? Unnatural means that a father and mother come together and have their children. And in, an, in a right world, we would live by that. And um, you would have 
parents who actually actually love one another who if they're if they want to adopt they can adopt if they want to become foster parents they become foster parents or they have their own, have and raise their own families and be responsible for their own children so it's un wait when you say unnatural though that's it, just not being able to reproduce doesn't make it unnatural yes it is so it's unnatural if a woman cannot get pregnant or has fertility issues yes that's unnatural that's that's an abnormal situation okay so you're saying two different things you're saying unnatural and then abnormal what is and is not normal is really culturally defined there are certain things that used to not be normal that are now you're, incredibly normal according I to how society dancing. views it i'm not dancing anything I'm, I'm explaining why your point is wrong when you say unnatural what that sounds like to me maybe i'm wrong is that we don't see it in nature there's no natural explanation for this thing Am I right or wrong? Um, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's uh, by natural and normal, I mean right and proper, and accor according to how how God designed it, all things being equal, all okay. things being normal. Okay, so then, all things being functional and healthy. Okay, so let's just stop saying unnatural then, because what that sounds like you're saying is that there's no evolutionary reason, there's nothing in nature. That's why it's unnatural, which, by the way, is not actually correct. There are a fuck ton of animal species that all exhibit homosexual behavior. But it doesn't sound like you're making. So you're that saying argument. they're acting like animals, and not no. Like what I'm saying is that your claim beings. that no. What I'm saying is your claim that it's unnatural does not make any sense because it is actually very much natural. There's evolutionary reasons why uh, we see homosexual activity in animals and in humans there's over 1500 those, animal species what are those evolutionary reasons so chimps you know for so much? yeah chimps for example will engage in homosexual uh sex because what it does is it strengthens bonds and it makes it so that there's less fighting and it helps their survival lions for example will engage in homosexual activity like uh you know humping each other cuddling nuzzling whatever in the way to strengthen their pride this is something that's been well documented since at least the 1990s. We've now seen over 1,500 animal species all exhibiting some level of homosexual behavior. So that's why I kind of had so a red flag go up when you so said it's unnatural. You, oh, no, it is unnatural. No matter what you say, it's unnatural. You're not using but the definition of your, that word correctly then. Whatever. I'm, I'm standing by. It is unnatural because a natural way of being is is sticking with what's with what's right and the way things are designed. When you go into when you go into animal like behavior and uh, falling into a, a worse and worse fallen state through uh, sexual degradation and uh, perversion, then yes, you can explain naturally these things happen. What's your what's your evolutionary um, explanation for why the human beings turn into this uh, madness? Wait, I'm sorry. I don't. Are you saying it's unnatural or it's abnormal? Because these are two Both. different things that we address in two different ways. And this is why we're not Both. getting anywhere right here. Both. But what's your okay. what's your evolutionary reason behind homosexuality among human beings and why it's exploded? Evolutionary reason? I, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what we would classify as the evolutionary reason. I know there's a genetic. You just component explain to why it. you just explain why why lions and chimps get into it. Yeah. Why did the human beings get into it in your Probably in your because mind? they love each other and they have a genetic predisposition to being gay. But you have no evidence for that. Yes, I do. The this latest is research has shown No, it's not speculation. The latest research <laughs> done in 2019 showed that there was a a combination of a massive amounts of genes that play a huge role in influencing sexual behavior, including same-sex behavior. It's anywhere between 8 to 50% or 8 to 30%, excuse me, genetic. So gay people are genetically predisposed to being gay, this is not something they're just randomly choosing. Uh, and as far as the evolutionary reason, that's probably why, because people evolve, their genes evolve, and they're set up to be more likely to be gay in certain circumstances. But when you say it's unnatural, what that means, to me at least, is that it's not something you see in nature, because it's unnatural. Yeah, when when nature, all things normal, you don't see it in nature. When they, but, when they go into a perversion, <laughs> yes, yes, you might. But it's not it's it's certainly not natural. So you're pretending that it's you're trying to force it into being OK and normal and natural. And, oh, they love each other. I agree with you that it doesn't happen randomly. It happens by design of evil to um, 
So everything bad that happens in nature is just a result of the fallen state and anything you like is just the right way. Like you're telling me it's unnatural. I'm presenting you with this evidence is a of you're doing no, another I'm, scarecrow. I'm not doing argument. a scarecrow. You're <laughs> saying it's unnatural. I'm presenting you with evidence that directly Strongman. contradicts the claim that it's unnatural by demonstrating there is a plethora of homosexual behavior in the animal kingdom. And you're saying, well, that's just a result of the fallen state, or that's just icky. No, I don't I'm talking remember about, exactly about what you're human saying. beings. I'm talking about human beings, but it is it is also it is also abnormal to see that in the in the animal kingdom too then why are there over um, 1500 animal species that exhibit this behavior how well, abnormal let's is get it? back to the let's get back to the human beings because they don't by and large they they're not into that even though all those species by and large they're not really into that that much so oh. uh among human beings it is it is um not just random it's from the degradation of the people of the people of the society and that's why you see it rising in the culture today where the zoomers are a huge percentages of them are are thinking that they're into this when so, they're just lost before we get down to that we, we haven't even like fixed this one issue because you're okay. saying the reason a family needs to be a father and mother is because it's unnatural and abnormal to be gay so we don't want those types of people raising kids that's your argument thus far so I've already, I feel, thoroughly addressed your unnatural claim. Why don't we just move okay. on to the abnormal right. and immoral? How sure. are you gauging morals? What makes this immoral exactly? Help me understand. Um, naturally, <laughs> if you will allow me to use that term, naturally, children want their real parents. I understand that occasionally in rare instances that doesn't happen. And because of you know the death of a of a father or a mother or both but other than that there's no real reason why children should not be raised by their own parents and we need to fix that issue bro rather than rather than push them into we already acknowledged um, this. being gay wait hold on no i know we I'm already telling wait, you we, you we you're, fought, you're we going back to the, the first issue, not uh, fix the symptom you're going back to the first thing you symptoms. already said. Obviously, the best thing for a child is to be raised by the parents that give birth to them. But that's obviously, just lip service. yes, you don't actually believe in. No, that. I do. But there are over a hundred. Why are you a liberal? Because there are over a hundred thousand children that are in the foster care system that need to be adopted every fucking year. They don't and when you have an even adopted. less likely chance to get adopted when you're disabled, we're then talking about the possibility for these people to actually have a home, the possibility for these people to actually have parents that care for them and give them something that they are currently missing out on in their childhood. And you're saying that's wrong because kids just want their real parents. Sometimes life isn't fair. Sometimes I you're know. actually an orphan. Sometimes you're in the foster care right. system. This is why yep. I say you don't care about kids because you don't. But that's you don't care about them either. We're not supposed to care about the kids. The parents are supposed to care about the kids if that or the people has... who are taking care of them. I feel like I'm about the I'm, kids. I actually no, no, feel here, like I'm me, in a special ed this. class right now. Holy I know, shit. I know, I know. No. The parents are supposed to care for the kids or the guardian in the case of like foster homes, supposed to care for the kids. But right now we have liberals who have taken over the foster care system and they're ruining it. I, I totally get you there. And now we have liberals who are acting like they can be gay parents of these of these kids. And that's that's adding another disservice. Yeah, maybe they'll do better in in some physical ways than um, than in the foster system that's so, so messed up, perhaps. But that's not that's not a solution. That's just addressing symptoms. What's You're the solution? Symptoms. What's the solution? The solution is um, men returning back to uh, to to common sense and take and taking the lead in these things. So frequently we have females, social workers, and um, people with a, a some messed up mindset getting into this social work type stuff. It's so it's so subverted you wouldn't believe it. Okay, even and, if I were to literally concede that, which that's completely unhinged. But even if I were to just say, okay, fine, you're right. That is a push for a massive cultural shift. Again, right. something yes. that is not going to happen in the childhood or even possibility the or even possibly the lifetimes of the kids that currently need homes right here and right now 
What are you going to homes. do about? They are in homes. They are in the foster care system, my dude. They're Which in is a, homes. You realize they're in like group homes where they're more yes. likely to be abused, more likely to do drugs, less likely to succeed in school. Fix, fix that. How, how do you fix it, please? Go in there and fix it. Have men go in there and uh, clean house. What does that mean? Clean house. They're already strapped for workers. They're already un like strapped as far as financial means go. This Finance, is part of the reason why the, the foster care why system is so shit. Abused. Finances are not why they're getting abused. Uh, okay. How do you fix it? Just send men in and have them clean house? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, you, so what you're so doing right men, now? Men of the town are supposed to look out for their for their community. I mean, just you go in there. I'm not I'm not in there seeing the the specific instances that you're talking about, but people who are in that in that world need to take responsibility. Okay, but again, you're not offering a viable solution. Maybe if you're able to round up a bunch of dudes that can go into the foster care system and hang out with little <laughs> kids, if that's something you want to go with, then fine, be my guest. But at the end why of the day, getting, we why have- are you getting like that? We have to- no, 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 let me, I have to stop you there. No, you're we have to, to address an actual issue no, here no, no, that no, you no, don't no, want no, to, no, no. you don't want to accept that this problem exists and I told you it exists. And your uh, and your people and your solution to it is a non-solution. It's either push for a massive cultural shift or send some yes. dudes in there, bruh. You sound like you're high <laughs> right now, dude. At the end of the day, we have kids that are waiting for families that are not getting adopted by heterosexual couples, and there and that's is not a, a bad thing. There is a group of people that are more likely to adopt and raise those children, and you're saying no. Because why? Because they're gay. Right. Yeah. You don't go. You so don't you go. have no reason here. You're just falling back on, well, gay, bad, because it's unnatural, even though it's not really. It's actually immoral, even though every single ounce of, uh, you know, research and statistical analysis shows that <laughs> kids raised by gay parents just do just as well. You're against not, the betterment not of the, you are against the betterment of these children. You're fighting against no, it right not, now. You are arguing against it. You're, that's this is your pretense and it's the pretense of the people whose statistics you believe but this is not reality when you look at the real when you look at the individual cases of these people it's not the case you see these the oh yeah you see this this one example of this chad guy who is raised by lesbians and he says i'm normal and i want other people to be normal like me but then when you look into his life he's a mess himself so your pre your pretense is what that is they're that? doing just as well, and on the outside it may look like they're just as well because you're looking at statistics and and all that stuff, but that doesn't measure the quality of the real quality of someone's life. Yes, it does. In many ways, no, it, it does. doesn't. It's Are you very talking limited. About their spiritual we agree well-being. It's very limited. Are you talking about their spiritual well-being? Yeah, that too. I mean, yes, definitely. Yeah, and this is why I keep having an issue here. Is that you are appearing? You don't believe to in the spirit. Uh, well, I, that's aside the point. What the, the problem here is that you are appealing to something that is unfalsifiable. You cannot prove or disprove the existence of our spirit, of our soul. You can, however, measure via the scientific method the well-being of children raised by gay parents when it comes to cognitive abilities, academic performance, the likelihood to do drugs, etc., these are things we can test for and measure for, and that's crucial here because that's how we are coming to this conclusion. What you're saying is, well, what if we everybody actually that, though. no? But, but what you're saying is maybe okay. we actually have a spirit, and then you know the the spirit Not doesn't maybe. like it. Not you're appealing. Maybe. To, can and, you prove the spirit? No. Can you prove the spirit? I don't have to prove the spirit. Everybody so you're, can it's see an can unfalsifiable tell. thing. Everybody that can S see cannot tell because I don't believe in it. Same thing with your, what you're claiming. No, I have actual yes. evidence over decades that have gone through the scientific method, which decades is right now versus millennia, which is right now the best known process to discover truth or get closer to it. And you're saying, no, we have a spirit, but you can't but prove is, to me that we have silly. a spirit. You cannot prove silly. to me that we have a spirit. I don't have to prove it. So then this why should I believe because it? Because you shouldn't believe it. You should go on being blind and being a, a liberal and thinking that you you care for kids. So why should I deprive disabled kids and kids that are a little bit older from having families that uh, give them the potential to have a much better life and live a much more fulfilled life because of this hypothetical spirit that's all inside of us? I honestly think that this is somewhat of a false dilemma because what you're saying, what you're suggesting is that 
a kid who's so, so-called disabled, I say handicapped, or who's older when he's adopted, gets adopted by these gays. And because these are well-to-do gays who are in a stable environment, in a safe, relatively safe community, this makes them better off. But you're not looking at like how they would have been. You're not looking, you're not looking, you're not taking me a case by case. You're just studying broad statistics and not the individual's cases. So I can't verify or, or falsify the stuff that you're claiming. You can't even falsify or verify the claim you just made, which was in regards what? to the spirit shit. You're appealing to no, some I, mystical spirit that lives knows. inside of us. Your, your justification has gone from, it's unnatural, bruh, even though it's not. It's abnormal, bruh, even though it's culturally defined, to, well, the reason these kids should be deprived from better outcomes is because of the potential that the spirit in them will be mad. Abnormal How do you reconcile this, dude? Abnormal is not culturally defined. And unnatural is what it is. Unnatural is what it is. Natural means father and mother and their own children. I understand. We We've that. already gone through the and natural the, thing. And the and abnormal, completely wrong abnormal, abnormal, just because it's become more and more typical. So you want to pretend that it's, oh, it's just culturally defined. We can just throw that away. It is. And pretend like we know. At we one know. point, it was, it, it was abnormal for women to wear pants. It's not abnormal right. anymore because it happens all the time. It's cultural. I know, but we're we're talking about we're talking about uh, people's people's relations. They can't even have real sex. I and don't care about any of this. this. Is a family. Get your mind out of the gutter, bro. That's nasty. I don't need to think about that. At the end of the day, then why? You, then, then because get the you, minds out I just of can't, the, I just can't gutter. get over the fact that you right now are are arguing against the betterment of children. It's not On the, the better of children. This is, it's a pretense. Uh, your, your Christian values are really falling short, my dude. You are literally arguing against the betterment of the children, which I thought Jesus loves the little children. Are you a You're Christian? arguing against the betterment of those children on the basis of the potential hypothetical spirit. Are you a Christian? I am not, but I was when I was younger. Then what do you know about Jesus or love? I was raised a Christian. Exactly. You just threw it away because you were brainwashed in college or whatever. Well, we can debate Christianity maybe another time. I would love to right. talk to you about that. At the but end of the day, I feel take a like Christian what you're to know getting that this at. is wrong. I feel okay. I feel like what you're getting at is that it's wrong because of your Christian beliefs. No, no. Even a normal person who is not Christian knows that this homosexuality thing is about sex. It's not about actual love. And yeah, they may want to think that they love each other and they want may want to think that they're helping the world, but those are some of the most misguided female-minded people, just like you are, who are, um, they don't have actual love, they just have feelings, and they, um, they may do well in life financially and stuff, so, they're, so the children raise up, get raised in a, a, a safer environment in terms of crime and all that stuff. But what you're saying, you're acting like, you're acting like you're the logical one, but there's nothing logical about homosexuality or the or the transgender stuff. There's nothing logical about depriving kids from better outcomes on the basis of a mystical spirit. But like, that's listen not to what, what you're I'm saying. Doing. Yes, you are. You sound like you're writing the next script for a My Little Pony episode. Like you're not How? making any kind of argument. You're not even appealing to common sense because even common sense tells us, well, if I can't see this thing, then it's probably not real. Common sense says, no, there is no fucking spirit. I'm not, I'm not, this is the difference. Oh, I you're think, hung up that, on that still? Yeah, because you're willing to take this risk and I'm simply not. I'm not it's willing. It's not a risk. I'm not you're willing. Putting a, you're putting the children at risk by having them be raised by gays. I'm not willing they, to risk the well-being of children being raised by a family that will potentially love them, will m definitely take care of them and provide them with better outcomes on the basis that there might be some existing spirit. I'm not going to do that. And I don't think that if you ask any child <laughs> so that you're is gonna desperate, pretend like you're going to pretend like you don't know that gay is wrong. I, it's and not wrong. Hide behind hide behind the statistics that sh shows that they get be they're better off under gay parents, quote unquote, gay parents and act like that's that's better for these foster kids. Well, if all available research shows that they do just as well. And then again, we're presented with a dichotomy of live the rest of your childhood in the foster care system in a group home or be taken yeah. in by a family that is going to give you a better life. Then, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and opt for the better life for the child. I'll opt for 
for what's whatever's right in the situation. If it's right to keep them in the foster home, it's right to keep them in the foster home. I'm not going to sacrifice the children to the gays. Okay. Yeah, it's not a sacrifice to the gays, though. But yes, that... it is. It truly is. They <laughs> don't want to sacrifice the them to it. An... It's not loving. You don't know it's that. Not... You can't prove that. This I... is just once again. They don't back... love each other. No, no, no. You're once again hiding behind these unfalsifiable claims. I What's could say love? right now. What is love? Then? I could say right now that, hey, you have no idea what love is. OK, you don't even know what it is. Yeah. You've not watched nearly enough romantic comedies to have any idea <laughs> what the fuck love means. Romance I can't actually love. I can't prove that. And you cannot prove what is in someone's head or if they are truly loving or if they're truly not. These are unfalsifiable claims, which is why at okay. the end of the day, it's falling flat. This is female mindedness right here, my friend. When you Thank are, you. I'm glad that you brought that up. <laughs> I did, because when you're appealing to this, well, they probably just don't like this thing or they're probably just not loving. You have no way of proving that. You I can't know that they're not it. loving. How it's do you know not it? that they probably because love means loving what's right, loving truth. You what don't makes love being what's gay right wrong. when you cave in. Uh, what makes gay being gay right? Uh, we don't determine if something is right. We what we look at it is is if it is uh, amoral, and then we decide to restrict it if it is wrong. There's plenty of things that are currently not quote unquote right, like smoking cigarettes, but they are still allowed and accepted by general society. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying that it's amoral. It's not immoral. It's not necessarily moral. What it is is that you need to give me a reason why it is immoral. I don't need to give you a reason. It's neutral. Because we all instinctively know that it's wrong. You look at it, oh, it's like, oh my gosh, that's wrong. You, you even got disgusted by it. Wait, how do, we, how do we just look at it and know it's wrong? What does that even okay, mean? Okay, you look at it, you know there's something wrong with it. I can't put my finger on it. But, uh, but I'm not going to go along since if I don't know that this is right, I'm not going to go along and pretend that this is right. Does God support it? Okay, so we're appealing to the Christian God then. No, no, it's not the Christian God. It's just nature and nature's God, the, the very nature of Let's stop of going back to the nature thing because I've already yes. demonstrated how your argument that it's unnatural makes no sense because it is actually it very natural. Are, are, those gay, are those gay chimps and gay uh, uh, lions, are they adopting little gay li lion babies and chimp babies? No, but penguins do. See? Same-sex penguins will literally get together and then raise children. That's nasty. But so you ask for it if it's natural. I give you an example, <laughs> then you say it's gross. You see how you have no arguments here? No, come on. But you're comparing human beings to animals. Human beings are supposed to be dignified. <laughs> I'm not. I'm giving you a direct contradiction to your dumbass claim that it is somehow no, unnatural. It is unnatural. I mean, I know that you're <laughs> saying, you're saying in a sense, you can say, okay, it's natural. And I will grant you that um, you can find uh, stories and maybe even statistics of kids that get ra get raised by these well-to-do gays who are like nice. They were raised Christian and then they turn away from God and all that stuff and get into their gayness and they raise the children all nicey-nice and the children turn out all nicey-nice and doing seemingly doing well on the, on the outside. But it's, it doesn't make it right. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about religion, I mean, here's a statistic from Williams Institute, which shows that three million LGBT adults are religious, reporting that religion is an important part of their daily life or that they regularly attend services. Yeah, because blind people want what's right. They're looking for love. They're looking for God. They're looking for what's right. But they're lost and they're groping about in the dark on how to find it. I just feel Same like you don't have any arguments. You're just saying... Well, no, it's bad for the kids. What makes it bad? It's unnatural. Well, no, it's not unnatural. Well, the spirit, well, it's not well, normal. Listen. You're just jumping all over the place. You're, you're like a little mouse grasping at anything you possibly can. I understand. Yeah, I understand. Um, let, me, let me jump at one other point that I'd like to, to make. Um, so we're just going to pivot away? Well, if you, want me to, if you want me to go in circles with you, I don't know if there's anything else to say. Well, there's not really much to what, say because you're what did in you favor. Want, what did you want? What have I not answered for you? Well, we haven't even gotten past, like, the second point you made. I know. We haven't talked about what makes it immoral. Okay. So what makes All it immoral? Right. Um, just looking at it, you can tell that there's something wrong. It doesn't fit. And so your, your natural inward self can know something is, is wrong or know something is not right without knowing how you know or why, why, or what exactly is wrong with it. 
So that's one. And I think that we all can relate to this type of thing. Frequently, you'll have an inkling that something is wrong without being able to express why. And if you don't go along, if you follow that inkling, you will realize, oh my gosh, it's a good thing I followed that inkling because this was the wrong, this would have been the wrong path. Are you or sure you you're not just saying listen. that it's immoral because it makes you uncomfortable? Like, for example, I think you would say the moral thing in the eyes of God is for a married couple, a man and a woman, to have sex so that they can reproduce. Maybe they've already had a child and then their kid walks in by accident and sees their mom and their dad having sex. They might mm -hmm. have an inkling inside that says, this is kind of nasty. This makes me really it uncomfortable. Is. Does it mean it's immoral? It might, it might well be, and it is, it is It's wrong. immoral it's, for a straight couple to have sex in order to reproduce who's married. If they're, if they're doing it to reproduce and they're married and they're doing it in the right way, then, I, then it's not immoral, but they should keep it away from the kids. No, I'm certainly. saying if they, uh, obviously, they have the door yeah. shut, the kid somehow accidentally walks in. It's not like this is something that they planned. Yeah, I know that if I saw a straight couple who was married, who were trying to reproduce, having sex, I would feel kind of grossed out. I don't want to watch yeah. people having sex. That's kind of nasty, right. you know? But that doesn't yes. mean it's immoral. I think that the, the even the straight couple needs to overcome the, the sex, too, because there is some... to reproduce? They reproduce, and then they overcome the sex. Like, you, you're eventually supposed to stop. It's like, we cannot, we human <sighs> beings cannot control ourselves. I get that. Even even the gays, I get that they cannot control themselves. They're out of control. Um, but this you, doesn't that you actually... do things in the confines of what's right. You're advocating... In the confines of <laughs> this... tradition. And then you hey, overcome you're, you're hurting it. my brain you know right now. It's... You're hurting well, my I'm brain. Saying, Married couples who have sex. a bad yeah. sex life don't do as well. They're more likely to divorce. If you're in favor of... I'm not saying... Hold on. Wait, if you're in favor of traditional values and families staying together, then why are you suddenly against straight heterosexual couples who are married, God-fearing Americans, <laughs> having sex once or twice a week? Like, what oh. the fuck, dude? By getting hey, hey. rid of that, you're making it l less likely that they're going to stay together. You're destabilizing I'm the marriage. I'm saying that they, th I'm saying that they should know that this is something they want to overcome, and eventually they will. Overcome if they what? What's right? The all this needing to have sex. You've seen these. They're trying to promote old people getting continuing to have sex. It's something's <laughs> wrong with that. Yeah. You're making like a hardcore incel argument right now. I don't even know how to argue against this. <laughs> no, it's this. not like, incel. It's ball cell. It's Christian. But it, I mean, it's it's uh, not Christian to not have sex. Even no, God Himself say, in the Bible say says that it's totally fine for married people to have sex. And then eventually overcome it because you're supposed to love God, not not be worshiping the body of the woman or whatever. How do you? You don't have to worship the body. But that's what's happening among the Christians. That's why the the country. That's partly why this foster system is a mess. Because <laughs> men are worshiping the women, and the women are worshiping Satan, so our society is upside down. I don't know but, where to go with you. I don't know okay. where to take this with you. What you're you're literally advocating now that we need to have more traditional values and we need to have more <laughs> nuclear families, but you're simultaneously arguing against married couples having sex, which no, strengthens no, saying, their relationship and makes it so that they're far more likely to stay together. Obviously, when they're sex young, is they can do that. Hold on, sex is not everything. Obviously, right. Just like Thank you. making sure you're spending quality time with your spouse is not everything, but it's an important aspect that plays a role in your relationship thriving. I just I don't even know where to take this when you're saying we should have more straight people raising kids, but straight people having sex, you're saying is to a degree immoral. Yeah, to very often it is immoral. They're just using each other. It's not love. That's for sure. OK, Um but there, man, I'm I'm blanking I feel like this on is what just I want really to get long, to. Really long, long way for you to kind of admit that you're not in a very happy marriage. But <laughs> I'm not in a marriage at all. But um, that makes sense. <laughs> whatever, man. Man, there was something I wanted to get to. Um, well, let me tell a story because I I know that there's. Um, okay, so I've heard a story, and this is a true story, of a young man who was raised by these quote unquote gay parents. Turned out to be a, a, a great young man, great guy, but he, because he lived in San Francisco area, all the people around him were these female-minded people where we, where we celebrate the child of the gay parents more than the, the child of the normal parents. 
like, oh, you're, you have two dads or two moms or whatever it was. That's wonderful. And he was getting kissed up to. And even in his, and even in his spirit, he knew that it was wrong. And there is a spirit like we have a, anyway, we have like a, even a, either an angry spirit or a weak or whatever. Um, I mean, I heard a story. He knew that it was there. wrong. And, and then he was that. I heard a story kind of similarly, but what it was is that it was a, uh, a a boy who was raised by gay parents, and then he grew up, and it was more or less acceptable. Uh, the school and his friends didn't really say anything, and then he ended up doing really well in life. Nice. And th he lived happily ever after. Well, I wish him well. Um, but the point is, uh, even in a even in a messed up situation, because a lot of people are in messed up situations, uh, it can be like redeemed. He he came out of that, even in that. Even though he grew up raised and they tried to brainwash him to, to believing wrong was right, he ended up being able to forgive his his real, I think it was two lesbians and they got with a father. He, he was able to forgive his both the lesbian so-called mothers and the and the real father and uh, and move forward in life. And yes, he did have the uh, sort of a well-to-do type of upbringing in SF, San Francisco, but um, I'm, my point is that even among like the straight couples and the Christians and all that, you're right. It is a messed up world, but that's not a reason to go even more messed up just because these studies show that they're going to do, they're going to do better. I, I don't really buy that. I, I mean, that's I really convenient that, for you, but it sounds like you're huffing yeah. copium. Like it's really convenient <laughs> for you to say, well, all of these studies Three decades worth of research, dude, and all of them come to the same conclusion, which is that kids raised by straight or gay parents do just as well as kids raised by uh, straight parents. And you're just saying, I don't buy it. Maybe I don't buy your story you just told me. Now what? You're screwed. You don't have to. Well, I'm not. The, the, no, thi I'm not. the thing that's interesting, I'm, though, is that you don't like individual stories don't give us actually, uh, ironically enough, the whole story. Because you also have plenty of stories. But neither do statistics. Statistics give us a much larger story to look at because what we see is a large swath of people controlled for a certain thing. In this case, controlled for kids raised by straight parents as opposed to kids raised by gay parents. And then it controls that and tracks those children for a long period of time and tracks their well-being. That's far better than, well, I had a friend who did this thing and then blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, what about all the countless stories of kids who were raped by their dads or were beaten by their moms or their their straight parents did nothing but abuse them and treat them terribly? Like S if step parents are much more likely not straight, to do not that. Not step parents, straight parents who have their kids biologically start I to know. beat the fuck out of them. If I were to tell you a story about this. It would be ridiculous if I were to then walk away and say, that's why straight people and straight couples having kids is bad. No, One but story but, doesn't prove shit. No, my point, my point was to give hope to the, the children who are, who are raised in, this, in these messed up households that you advocate for. Well, what my, I'm advocating my point for is to give a, hope to the children that are currently in foster group homes where they're doing really same badly. Same thing. And then, unfortunately, there are people like you that want to get Come in on. the way of children actually <laughs> living a better life because you think gay people are weird because the spirit said so. No, everybody knows that there's something wrong with it. Even you yourself, you're just not being honest about it. No, uh, there is nothing wrong with it. I but see your own stats, wrong your own stats, your own stats that you love so much have shown that the the people who are not the parents of the children are doing all kinds of crazy things to the children because they don't actually care about the children. What crazy things are they doing to the children? What stats show this? The, uh, abuse, uh, so-called abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, and all kinds of other things. Wait, what it's are you- much more frequent among uh, people who are raising kids who are not their own biological children. So then by that logic, which that's not even true, but by that logic, it is true. are you against No, step-parents? Wait, are you, are against you kidding a, me? Are you against a God-fearing American white family who is <laughs> a white, or a, a woman and a man who've been married for five years adopting a child? Not if they're God-fearing, no, but it's, but you are taking a risk when you- But you're making you, a claim uh, that they're more stuff. likely to sexually abuse the children. What does this have they to do with They are more anything? likely than the biological parents, yes. You could make this argument against straight parents adopting also. True, very true. Okay, so it's not an argument or a point against the gay adoption thing. Yes, it is. 
It's okay. an extra point. It's an extra point. You're adding you're adding trouble upon trouble by by bringing the gay agenda into the children's lives. They're trying to Okay, I remembered my point. My last point or if you will. Um there is this push because kids actually you know, your your innocence is spoiled so you don't you can't see clearly, but kids know clearly when something is off. That's why they try to brainwash the kids. That's why they're targeting them at a young age in the schools. They're pushing for it in the uh, social media. There is a major so-called gay agenda in the world trying to push push wrong as right on the kids because kids will be honest with you and they will hurt your ego real bad, whether you're fat or ugly or something is wrong. And they will be like, oh, what's, that's weird. And now they're, tr- they're trying to brainwash the kids early to be like, oh, Gay is gay is okay, but everybody knows that it's not okay. It's not right. It's not uh, truly natural. Despite you what you're, about, despite the, what you say. How do you Go feel ahead. about raising kids to think that it's all a okay to like believe in Jesus Christ? They should be careful with that too. A lot of the the mothers are are mis teaching the children and some female minded fathers. I I agree with you. There is a lot of uh, messed up brainwashing and overprotective. Like female thinking in the Christian, so-called Christian I don't know Christian how you world. would make that into a female thinking thing. At the end of the yeah, day, because, what, you're, what you're talking about is just raising children with the knowledge of how the world currently works. There's nothing wrong no, with man. being gay. There's no problem with it. It does no negative uh, to society or to the individuals partaking in that behavior. All you have at the end of the day are negatives from society on gay people. All oh, you have are individuals who are discriminated against or barred from adopting from losers like you, sorry, who are then more likely to suffer mental illness or have problems. It's the lack of acceptance that leads to the negative outcomes a lot of the times that gay people no. suffer from. So raising okay. kids to have a general idea that, hey, this is what it means to be gay. This is what it means to be straight. There's nothing wrong with either of these things. So long as you're doing it appropriately, which, mind you, we would both be in agreement that if you're talking about actual sex with children, that is inappropriate and should be uh, instantly condemned and, and done away with. But if you're just teaching kids with a general understanding of this is what it means to be gay. Hey, you you turned on your Disney movie yesterday and you saw the princess and the prince give a kiss. Sometimes there are two, two uh, men and two women who love each other also and they can get married also. Why is this wrong? Okay, let me let me um, bring up some some statistics. I've heard that um, the so-called pedophilia thing is more prominent among the LGBTIQ than the than the straights. Um, the How so? uh, the mental illness. I've heard that the mental illness and the depression and the drug abuse and all that stuff is more prominent. And you've admitted it. The suicide is more prominent among the LGBTQ stuff. Like I mentioned before, the domestic violence is very high among certain sectors within the so-called LGBTQ, so-called community. And so, so this stuff, you're acting like, oh, nothing's wrong, la-di-da-di-da. No, but I'm not. But that's not true. That I understand that, of course, there's an issue with uh, LGBTQ. And you're blaming just, it all on how they're treated, discriminated against yes, by guys because, like me. Yes, because— That's not true. Yes, they don't care what is. I think. And I, I will explain it to you very easily. So when you live in a society— that treats you with contempt or there's a negative bias against you that worsens your mental health. This does not mean that actually being that thing is the mental health problem or is even a problem at all. And I know you believe that because you would never say that being a white man or excuse me, a white man is a <laughs> mental illness because white men commit suicide at higher rates. There are right. external reasons as to why this is, and that's why you see the suicide rate among gay and trans individuals decrease s- significantly when they are accepted by their families. If even one right, close family, family, so if even one close family member accepts them rather than discriminates towards them, they are less likely to commit suicide. They're less likely to do drugs. They're less likely to have any kind of negative outcomes because the they are external to the individuals, not because they are that thing. Okay, so it's you you made a reference to the fact that the family showing love to the people is accepting them for who they are. Key. Accepting no, them for but being that's not gay. Who they are, that's what they think that accepting they are. Accepting them for who they, they are is what, what leads to the into. decrease in suicidality. Okay, so that's LGBT, a stat for you, okay? That's fine. 
the LGBT is not who they are. It's not an I. It's not a true identity, nor nor is the race thing a, a true identity. But the, much less is the sexual perversion or the gender um, misidentity a um, a real identity. It's not who they are. If they are told that this is not who you are, this is what you've gotten into because you're in a fallen state, um, and they are shown love. Then I then I grant you, yeah, that will telling help them, them that this commit. is just a result of the fallen state is pretty much in line with being discriminatory. Once again, reinforcing this dipshit idea that it's somehow a sin to be gay, which then you're speculating. Worsens, Show me your statistics. It worsens the suicidality. What Show you're advocating your for? No, no, no. This is my big problem here, and this is what I I find a lot of your types do this, which is where they will complain about the problem, like look at the suicide rate, bruh, while mm -hmm. simultaneously fueling negative stereotypes in regards to LGBT individuals, which negatively impacts the suicide rate. You're but contributing to the problem. You're contributing to I've the problem at the same that's... time that you're invoking the problem to argue against that group. But these are not problems. These are symptoms of the root issue inside of them. What is the root issue? Uh, the same root issue that we all have. We all, we all have sin and we all have issues, perversions and, and, uh, twisted minds that we have to overcome we all have vices and uh and anger that we have to overcome i just i don't understand and so these how... are the, so you blaming the christians yeah the christians do have some blame but this is a, a lot um, of it yeah yeah because they've been weak they haven't been man-led they've been woman-led so that's why they're super homophobic there's no such thing as homophobia so the white evangelical Christians who are the least accepting of gay people in America is a result of the womanly led Christianity? No, the evangelicals are the most sensible people, but they are woman led. So they're so they're still kind of they're wayward. That's why they're not winning in the country. They're losing. So if it's if the gay suicide rate or the LGBT suicide rate, excuse me, is mm -hmm. due to the fact that they are fallen within or something. Yeah. Why is it then? <clears throat> Why is it then that their suicidality goes down when they're accepted rather than discriminated against? Because they're because they're shown a level of uh, a form of love, if you will, or, or a, an imitation of love. So when they're shown acceptance and love rather than a pushback against their identity or their sexual orientation, if, that's what, if what you're saying is true, whatever you want to call it, then don't. Doesn't that follow then that this is external to the the issue? This is not a, a result of the individual being gay, but rather it's external factors that plays a role in the suicide. External rate? factors like their own pa failed parents. I thought we just acknowledged that when their it. parents accept them, then their suicidality goes down. No, man, I don't accept that. They said there's the parents failed, and that's why they felt end, ended up in this in this uh, degenerate mindset. And so they um, they end up they know it's wrong, they don't know how to they don't know how to deal with it, so they just accept it. But that doesn't mean that they um, that doesn't mean that they overcome their issues within. Because they, it's not an issue. Of many. It's not an being gay is not an issue. It's not yes, an issue is. to overcome. No, it's not. Only dipshits yes, like is. you say it is. Every other ounce of statistical fact, whether we're talking about whether or not it's moral, the harm that it does, there's nothing negative here. Nothing. There's plenty negative. That's what, there's plenty negative, man. And like I mentioned, they're they're more prone to those other uh, abusive things towards children. So you're saying that gay people are more likely to like abuse and molest children? Yeah, I think so. I I believe that I've heard that. Yeah, that's completely bullshit. Not true at all. You can look Show at the me way your studies. Sure. The American Psychological Association looked at a study and or excuse me, conducted a study where they found that there was no higher likelihood of uh, gay parents molesting kids. In fact, 90 percent of molestations are committed. I wasn't by... talking about parents. I'm talking about in general. Yeah. I OK. Even so, even if you're not talking about parents, just in yeah. general, no, gay people are not more likely to molest children. In fact, 90% of child molestations are committed by men who are married to women. That mean, But if they're doing it to little boys, that means that they are homosexual. Okay, so this is exactly why I knew if we got into this argument, it would be a very uh, sad uh, course of events. 
Well, no, I mean, this is not look, true at all. This this yes, is it. A, no, no, it's not actually. I understand again that common sense might tell you one thing, but unfortunately, you're showing us just how far common sense gets you. You can listen to the research by A. Nicholas Groth. He's a pioneer in the field of sexual abuse of children. It founds out. It turns out. Excuse me. There are two types of child molesters: fixated and regressive. The fixated child molester, which is the stereotypical pedophile, cannot be considered homosexual or heterosexual because he often finds adults of either sex repulsive. Regressive child molesters are generally attracted to other adults, but may regress to focusing on children when confronted with stressful situations. If a man molests a little boy, it doesn't actually mean that that man is gay. What it means is that that adult is taking advantage of disproportionate power dynamics amongst themselves and a small child. But there, right, is, no, there is no such thing as gay. It's just a, a sexual perversion, one of many. I think we should go ahead and move on to the Q&A, folks. What do you think? Sure. Uh, okay, yeah, I think that this is a good place to end. If we could just summarize really quickly, we have... Yeah, go ahead. We have Hake saying it's a perversion while providing absolutely no demonstration of this. He's saying common sense shows us this thing, whereas his common sense got us actually to the further away from the truth rather than closer. And he is literally advocating for the worsening outcomes of disabled or of older foster kids simply because he doesn't like gay people and doesn't understand the issue. Okay, okay. I, 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 I say, no, that's not what I'm advocating for. He's just scarecrowing my argument. I guess I am. I guess I am. I guess it's just a scarecrow. Either that or maybe you're a perversion of humanity. I don't know. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's go ahead and hit the questions. And uh, we do have quite a few, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I did send a warning in the chat that uh, we are, have a, quite a, a full list here. So if you send any more uh, super chats, there's a good chance that they won't be read. So uh, fair warning. Um, and I uh, want to let you know, folks, that uh, I will be doing an after show after the debate about 20 minutes after we end here. So uh, Hake will be joining me. We'll be uh, continuing conversation uh, in line with these kind of themes in that uh, respect. Uh, there will be an after show on the Discord as well. That is linked in the description below. Um, there should be a lively discussion there as well. And with that, we will go ahead and kick it to the first question on the list from Lord Dibby 42 for $3. They say, Hunter. Were you a formula baby? Um, nope. Nope. There you go. From Crystal A for five dollars. Hake, you got this. Thank you. Appreciate it. Encouragement. From Lord Dibby forty two for three dollars. Hunter, your opening sounded female minded. Uh, that comment sounds female minded. From Lord Dibby forty two for five dollars. Hunter, are your glasses real or? Do you just wear them to look somewhat intelligent? Uh, I just wear them to look intelligent. Yeah, no, they're, they're fake glasses. I don't even need to wear glasses. I just put them on because it's they're cool. Mm -hmm. James uh, wears Herman... ones that block the blue light. James Koontz of Modern Day Debate. The blue light, the infamous blue light. I'm not even sure that's a real thing. Uh, <laughs> the Herman Cain Awards for 199 for conservative anecdotes, Trump data every time. Nice. Trill. So sad, uh, honestly. Anecdotes do help add to uh, – they, they provide a real story so you can actually have something to hold on to rather than try to intimidate with statistics and stuff. Um, it's just moment. sad that a Four lot of the times these, these female-minded conservatives would prefer a little bedtime story over actual uh, data, but it's okay. I'm, I'm so glad that you're adopting this female-minded uh, term. Well, it's funny because you're a little you, bit misapplying it. Well, but... no, you coined it, but yet you're the one that actually exhibits it the most. It's it's kind of funny, but so you agree that it's it's female mind. You think it's female minded to be logical? I don't think you're logical at all. Oh, okay. So you think it's female minded to be illogical? No, I like to just use it against you because <laughs> I think it's really funny. Nice. <laughs> Either way, I'm happy. I read that with poor cadence, but I'm glad you guys picked it up. Um, from Lord Dibby 42 member for five months says, James Hake is on fire. Indeed. Happy birthday, Hakester. Thank you. It was just my birthday back in July. Turned 40. From the Dharma Defender for $2 says, homosexuality is natural. Marriage is not. Interesting point. I can see what he means, but, but he's mistaken. Um, he is mistaken. 
what makes it natural just out of curiosity because the bible says so or what what makes it natural to marry and have children and and uh raise a family like that's what the, no the actual institution of marriage i think is what they're talking about uh god put it together god nature and nature's god the nature of things shows us that it's right i mean you just look at it on its face it, it just looks right doesn't it look right when you see a happy family yeah, so I've seen a happy. lot of happy gay families, too, and it, it really does make me quite happy. I get that sort of inkling that it's really a positive thing, and that's how I know it's morally right. Mm -hmm. You're a mess. From Daniel Hackle for $10, $10 Canadian. I have experienced a curing of my own homosexuality slash urges through heavy metal chelation, chelation, and so have many others. There is a strong connection between toxins and sexuality slash crime. Get healthy, wake up. Uh, can you read the last line that he said? Read the last uh, two sentences before get. Uh, well, the last sentence before get healthy and wake up. There is a strong connection between toxins and sexuality slash crime. Get healthy oh. slash wake up. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that they're like Hunter said. You know, there's. There's supposedly a bunch of genes that are associated with this. There's a lot of there's a lot of issues that come into our lives that cause different uh, different issues. It's interesting. Gotcha. Uh, Dharma Defender for five dollars says eighty percent of marriages end in divorce. How many LGBT relationships end in an unloving circumstance? Seems facts don't matter to Christians. Only feelings. I think it's I think it's more prominent among the gays to be uh, to be um, what is that term unfaithful. So uh, I'm pretty sure that the statistics are on my side if you're looking at the right factors. But another thing I wanted to bring up, if I can, uh, is I think that the pornography is is causing a lot of is not helping the situ situation. Well, it's so definitely a there. good point that there is definitely an issue with the divorce rates amongst straight couples. I mean, if we do want to talk about an unloving relationship, I, I think that's a pretty good point about the fact that a lot of those marriages do end in divorce. What was yeah. the second thing that commenter said? Something about Christianity? Christians yeah, don't care about... Said, seems that facts don't matter to Christians, only feelings. Well, you know, this is probably going to be a bit of a fedora atheist move, but that kind of <laughs> is true because it has to be. Like, if you believe that an all-knowing God exists and there was a talking snake and that there was like the parted Red Sea or that Noah's Ark happened. Like you can't actually buy into too many facts because if you do, you'll find out that all of that is complete bullshit. I, I say that there is a difference between facts and truth because there are a lot of cherry-picked facts that the mainstream media will bring out to distract you from truth. A lot of people lie with facts. So there's a difference. Gotcha. From, oh, I lost my place. <clears throat> Fernandez T for twenty dollars says here to show, here to show support for Hake. Get a job, USA nice. number one. Indeed, I am showing the get a job sticker right here. I am not get a job, but get a job does Jesse Lee Peterson savage moments. Yeah, um, and I support him. And then, um, shout out to Fernandez T and thanks for supporting Modern Day Debate. They are a worthy channel. Very are nice. You against entrepreneurship, Hake? I am for entrepreneurship. Yes, I am for it. I'm not against it. But oh. getting a job, working for an entrepreneur is maybe the next best thing. Mm, okay. Gotcha. From Lord <laughs> Divi42 for $5 says, Hunter, if you ask a question, stop interrupting and let it be answered. Oh, you oh, okay. did okay, I think. Sorry. Uh, and it's funny because we started to talk at the same time. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was being mama. I was being female-minded. I was trying trying to be like there there hunter did okay what a mess <laughs> gotcha from kick arthur the bastard for 9.99 says stranger love out of self-interest or charity parents love from biological interest motivations are different guardians versus bio parents parentship good I, I agree and i think that hunter agrees with that too he just thinks that it's fine for gays to be adopting well yeah because they're they benefit the children and i mean i think if you're gonna live your you agree uh, that it's not a real marriage though right i 
It absolutely is a real marriage. And I think that if you are going to live out your Christian values, I think that having loving families who are together and raising children, especially a nuclear family together, two parents raising kids, is absolutely the right move. When I'm in charge, I'll overhaul the the um, foster system and, and uh, you'll be happy. You'll see. You'll see I care about the kids. Okay. Nice. Hake is planning to take over the world. Got it. <laughs> Dharma Defender for $5. Hake, homosexuality is right morally. What's the argument? What's the argument against homosexuality? You don't have an argument. You know what? Um, like, I, like I mentioned, you kind of instinctively know that, that there's something off about things without being able to express it. But there are a lot of things that are wrong with it and things that go that go with it. It may not be inherent to the thing itself, but there's all kinds of different cancers among the the male gaze and all kinds of issues. They know that it, they themselves know that there's something wrong with it. But people just forget there was a campaign to make gay seem OK. And it seems to have convinced the younger crowd, younger and younger. Well, honestly, I, I mean, um, if you want to talk about like the, the multiple different cancers or whatever, that's more or less a result of anal sex and a good portion know, of, man, and a good insane. portion of, of gay people do not even, uh, engage in anal sex. So what I'm you're doing right that. now is you're making an argument against anal sex. You're not actually making an argument against people being gay, people, gay people getting married, uh, adopting children, raising them. You're not making an argument against any of that. You're just saying that a potential downside of anal sex could be cancer, just yeah, like a potential, stuff. just like it's a potential vulgar. risk of having heterosexual sex with your white God-fearing wife could also increase your likelihood of getting STDs if she has something, for example. That's not really a good argument against it. No, man, that's silly. And also, one more thing I forgot to say is, okay. I think that it's, it is morally okay. I think my argument in favor of you know gay is okay is that I see it and I just get the opposite. You know, I feel this inkling that this is totally okay. It's totally cool. I get like a big smile on my face. I think it's my inner spirit just approving, looking with approval, you know. You have a dark spirit in you, man. Get a a woman's spirit. All right. From Dan Zamet for a member for three months. Extra Juicy says, H. Uh, you both page. Damn. Uh, why did evolution produce masculine and feminine? So that the (laughs) woman can follow the man. (laughs) What is masculine and what is feminine? You're asking me? I'm just asking generally because what is masculine and what is feminine is mostly culturally defined. Roger that. Uh, From Bubblegum Gun for $2 says, At Hunter, should Discord mods be allowed to adopt? Uh, depends on who the Discord mod is. Most likely, no. And anybody with an anime profile picture, they should be banned as well. Denied. Daniel Hackle for $5 Canadian says, Google mercury poisoning make birds homosexual. If you want to understand this issue. Interesting, man. They're turning the birds gay. First the frogs, now the birds. The Hermit Kane Awards for one ninety nine. Hake's argument, it's icky. What a genius. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a legitimate argument, honestly. From and Felix. everybody knows it. No, it's it's a. It's I mean, by definition to appealing it. to this feeling of disgust, and then saying right. that's what justifies you thinking it's morally wrong. It's no, I mean, it's a just, delusional argument. It's not. Well, an the argument. thing is, the thing is, you guys are kind of trying to steamroll and say this is right and we're going to do it, but this, uh, when you let evil out of the closet, it just keeps on taking over and just starts oppressing the the normal Christian people. The Christians are having to go into the closet now. Why is and it that the, the Christians are, usually are oppressing gay people? That's not the. That's not what's happening. Truly. Really? Then why is it that white? Yeah, it's the other way around. The white evangelical Christians are the least accepting of gay people, even compared to American Muslims. And they're the most hated people in America. The white evangelical Christian men. I think you'd be quite surprised the amount of privilege that they benefit from in society. The fact that their churches are tax exempt. There is quite a lot of privilege and benefits that they receive. Not to mention if you Rightly want to start so. complaining. Not to mention if you want to start complaining about social hatred or whatever. I don't think that argument holds up because there's also plenty of societal hatred directed at gay people. Nobody should be hating. I agree with you there. Rolling down the line from Neon Noir for five dollar five euros. 
Uh, animals also eat and hump all kinds of harmful things, Hunter. That doesn't make the behavior natural. It just means they're animals acting on urges. Uh, well, the claim was not if an animal does this, therefore it's natural. It's the fact that there's over 1,500 animal species that not only exhibit this behavior, but do so for actual evolutionary reasons. So that's the first thing. The second thing would be even if it were actually unnatural in the sense that there was no way to see it in nature or demonstrate any evolutionary reason, I would then say, who gives a shit? Because actually, what is and is not natural doesn't determine whether or not something is morally right. In fact, there's plenty of things that happen in nature that are not morally right. There's also plenty of shit that we do as humans that doesn't happen in nature that is morally okay. For example, pooping on the toilet. Most animals, you know, they're not really a big fan of that. That's not very quote-unquote natural, but it's just fine for humans to do it. This idea that if something isn't natural, therefore it's bad, or if it is natural, it's good— doesn't really hold up. The reason I responded the way I did was because hate claimed it was unnatural. And if we can witness it in thousands of animal species for actual evolutionary reasons, the claim that it is unnatural is not only a shit argument, but it actually doesn't even hold up. Human beings should not act like undignified animals. Well, Hake, please take a word of your own advice. <laughs> okay, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> From Daniel Hackle for $5 Canadian says, Anyone else see the irony in all the people who blindly believe scientism with the same faith they mock the religious for for without deeper knowledge? Knowing? Yeah. Sorry. Not, not, not at all. Nope. Obviously, I, I think when people are saying scientism, they're, they are referring to like this idea of blind following the sciences. Uh, I know that people are obviously going to accuse me of being that person, but that is not actually what I do. What I do is I look at actual research. I try to find out what has been done. What is the overall consensus in this field? What is the, What are the challenges to this? What does the opposing data say? And the reason these are not comparable at all is because one person has faith in something they cannot prove, something that is completely unfalsifiable. For example, God rose somebody from the dead. God exists. God made the earth. Things that you can simply never prove. Whereas I believe scientific studies because they go through scientific methods and we're able to find conclusive results that are actually tangible and applicable to the, uh, the circumstance that we're talking about. So when people say that they're the same things, that's really just a, a complete lack of understanding in how science works. You're talking about having studies that give you the best and the closest available answer to something or it gets you closer to truth. Or you're talking about blind faith that there is some sky daddy who made a snake talk. There is a there is an issue in society today, both among the Christians and the anti-Christians and non-Christians, that... People are relying on their intellect, and their intellect is dark. They don't really know what they're looking at. And there has been a, what I say is communist replacement of looking to the, um, the counselor, the man, the father, the pastor for wisdom and leadership. Now they're going to um, academics and these fake sciences like psychology and psychiatry and all that mess. And now we have atheism on the rise, and it's atheism and the gays. All love to the atheists, all love to the gays and respect, but it's it's arrogance and it's blindness. And you guys are um, you guys are every bit as in darkness as the Christians whom you hate. I really don't mean this actually as a, a insult, but when you say that psychology is fake, that's not only bullshit, but I think that you would probably benefit greatly from going to a therapy session once or twice. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying that even as an as an insult. I think you should put this delusional idea that that is somehow be, uh, fake behind you and go and seek out a therapist. You can talk to a strong white Christian man if you'd like, but it might benefit you, Hake. Well, I appreciate the well wishes. We sure. should move on. Uh Let's go with DM for $5. Says, Hake, saw your debate with Stardust, and it was a good watch. Although we disagree on a lot, I think this topic would have been better debate with her. Well, I appreciate it. I, I like talking with Hunter, and, uh, and I liked talking with Stardust. Nice. Moving on. From Danny Duncan for $5. Says, Hunter, do you believe in a clear discernment of right and wrong? What is the difference between a human being and an animal? Um, well, the difference between human being and an animal, I would say, is probably the fact that we tend to have a much higher level of consciousness and sentience. 
Uh, but if we're going to go about, about how we determine what is right and what is wrong, I usually like to just start with the basics, which is, does this result in harm to me? Does this result in harm to others? And does this result in harm to general society? Obviously, if the general well-being of the public is not great, that's going to have a wraparound effect and negatively impact me. The reason that I have a big problem when people say it's wrong to be gay is that even if you want to appeal to the Bible, even if you want to say that the Bible is my moral foundation, there are plenty of things that God said there that make sense on the basis of reducing harm. Thou shall not murder, for example. Obviously, murder does harm, not only to the person you're murdering, but even to your own psychological well-being. But then when we come to this issue of gay people, suddenly we have no evidence that being gay does any harm to anybody, really, and that, and yet we have to fall back on, well, it's a sin because God says so. And that's kind of where you lose me at the end of the day. That and the slavery okay. verses. Uh, okay, from... Uh... Lord Dibby42 for $10 says, Hunter, Hake has explained to you in common sense and logical terms, your argument is a projection of your own deep-rooted failures that you haven't come to terms with yet. Get a grip. Um, wow. For somebody who thinks that psychology is fake, they, they really read me like a book. I am definitely going to go seek help immediately. Thank you very much for that uh, kind, caring, and loving message. And from Lord Dibby42, again, for $5, says, Hunter, sex doesn't come from love. Sex is to procreate. You're confusing love with lust. Easy to confuse when in a fallen state, like yourself. Uh, sure. So, obviously, the desire to have sex can come from lust, but also you can have passionate and loving sex, for those of uh, all the virgins in chat who are unfamiliar mm. with this idea, uh, it doesn't have to be one or the other. And also, no, sex does not only exist to procreate. If it did, there would not be, again, a plethora of benefits for marriages that engage in regular sexual activity. There would not be a lower likelihood of men having prostate cancer if they are regularly engaging in sex. We would not see these types of benefits exist if the only thing it was for is reproduction. Usually people that say that just have a repressed breeder fetish, and uh, rather than just kind of accepting it, they would rather, um, you know, project this basically and uh, claim that everybody else who has sex to, to not reproduce is somehow in, in the moral wrong. And from Danny Duncan for $5 says, Hunter, does the moral compass slash lack of ever come into fo comes into play for companies that find and report research statistical analysis data. God bless you. Um, I don't even know what that question means. Does the moral compass play a role in how they are assessing their data? Was that what the question was? I'm pretty sure. Um, I mean, or the usually, lack thereof. yeah, usually like sciences and the scientific method is not looking to disprove or demonstrate some level of morality. They're usually just looking for how this thing affects another thing in the most reductionist terms here. Obviously, you can gauge certain sciences to support your moral framework. You can also use sciences to argue against it, maybe. But no, science is not the exploration of morality. But scientists do have an agenda. And frequently, they will try to make their make themselves seem important. So they'll get all excited if they get coverage in the media. They will try to say that there's this crisis or that crisis to get funding from the <clears> government <throat> and all that stuff. So there's definitely biases that naturally occur in sciences. And well, especially when there's, when there's um, politically charged issues such as the one we're discussing. Yeah, I mean, of course there can be biases that play a role. That's why it's so important to have the peer review process. And then that's why it's so important to have on top of that meta-analyses. What a lot of people I think misunderstand is they think the science is, here's my research paper, and then another dude looks at it and says, all right, I agree with that, so therefore it's good. That's not actually the case. What the sciences do is they then take a hypothesis and they attempt to falsify it. They don't attempt to affirm it. They try to prove it wrong. And then the more and more they fail at doing that, the more that that hypothesis becomes more and more likely to be true, or at very least brings us closer to the truth. So a lot of the times people just have a, a misunderstanding of how the sciences work. Um, as far as biases go, the only actual bias that I'm, I'm aware of with certain research here is uh, the study that said that kids raised by gay parents do badly. The peer <laughs> review process was completely fucked up in that study. 
Gotcha. From no, read that one already. From Robert Summers for five dollars says, "Hake, is there any singular argument that is a problem with homosexual parents adopting that is in no way a problem with straight parents?" Um, yeah. Um, by definition, the so-called gay couple is is already starting off on the wrong foot. Most so-called straight parents are all messed up. They're going to mess up the kids. All gay parents are messed up and going to mess up the kids. So we're back to just blind assertions. This is like if somebody said, Hunter, why is a Ford better than a Toyota car? <clears throat> well, because all Toyotas suck. All Toyotas are lame and they are going to crash and they're going to blow up. I don't have to give you any evidence. My spirit guide inside of me said so. Well, either you see the truth of what I'm saying or I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying There's to no answer the truth question to what you're quickly. saying. The truth. To, you don't not, know that you're making an assertion without not, evidence. No, it's that you haven't demonstrated why I should believe you at well, all. Well, then why are you making? I don't have to demonstrate. It. You're just making an assumption that I'm wrong. We're in a debate. Without anything. We're in a debate. Usually I know, but you're you, you want to demonstrate wrong, you your position. You want to usually? Yes, I do know you're wrong because what you said no, you is don't. contradictory to the three decades of peer-reviewed research. Yeah. I know, but the peer-reviewed research isn't looking at all this stuff, and I would like to see what you're talking about. Okay, and then we have another super chat from Robert Summers for five dollars. Says, "I'm sorry, you lead with an argument with you lead an you lead with an argument with. I heard Hake Hunter refutes the assertion, and you ask him for studies. <laughs> I know, Where he... are you your studies?" I'm not into this study thing. I'm not into studies. Um, I have some common sense. I have limited knowledge. I could gain some more knowledge. I could stand to gain some more knowledge. I, I acknowledge, I suppose. But if I already know that something is wrong, I'm not going to, I'm not that interested in pretending like, oh, this is right. I, I can listen to things and find out, oh, this, there's some truth to this. There's some truth to that. Like I've heard from Hunter, I'm sure that some of this stuff, there's some truth to it. But I already know that it's wrong. And so my point is to put out the truth as best I see it. And I'm not into the studies thing. I'm kind of mocking Hunter when I say, where's your studies? Because he's all into that. I feel like Hake and a lot of his, uh, his inbred followers in the chat here would probably never apply this logic if it was something that they didn't agree with. So, for example, if you were talking to, like, a blue-haired crazy libcuck, who said, white people are all sickening, they're sick fucks. And then you said, really? Why is that? And you said, well, I just know, you know, it's my common sense that white people are disgusting and they're bad. I don't think that anybody would accept that, for good reason, mind you, because that's a shit argument. Well, I mean, you, you, <clears throat> you can find wrong stuff in anybody, for sure. No, but what you're saying and appealing to common sense would not be uh, accepted by you or your followers or the people, the inbred losers in the chat here, if it were applied to something other than gay people. I don't know why you're assuming that they're inbred, but they <clears throat> they can see what's what's true and what's not true. You're you're blind and you're referencing stuff. That you, there may be some facts behind it, but you you can't see the truth. It's either you see or you don't. Yeah. And you just can't see the truth that white people suck. All right. Yeah. Like I mean, the, they, the analogy they, they falls are, apart. They are losing. The analogy falls apart as soon as you whites, apply it to any kind of a group losing, that you agree with. Whites are losing our country, and we are uh, majorly attacked. So on some level, there is truth to that. Wow. Okay. Okay. From Black Supreme Kai for four ninety nine says, In all seriousness, without saying I've heard, what are some factual stats that you have, including source? I'm not into the sources and stats. I, I couldn't give you even one. So I can I can only give you the I've heard. <laughs> OK, and uh, that will wrap up our super chats and uh, that timer is inaccurate anyway. So I'm just going to turn that crap off. So with that, I just want to mention we did do a poll in the in the chat a little earlier. Somebody asked uh, Irish Brazil asked, um, can we do a poll to see if there are any actual adoptive parents? And turns out there were only 3% of people watching that were adoptive parents. 29% were childless entirely. 
39, 31% are biological parents and 34% answered one day, maybe. So do you guys want to react to that at all? Yeah, we need to have more white babies and then white people will suck less. Sorry, kids. But we atheists need to make more babies. <laughs> Thankfully, there's not really much to whether or not that we have more white people or more black people. Just having a solid, healthy population benefits all of us, whether we're talking about the economy or just our general well-being. So, yeah, have more babies, sure, but they don't necessarily have to be white babies. Certainly. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for this uh, riveting discussion. Thank we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up now. Uh, Hake, I believe you're going to join me uh, in a little bit, about 15-20 yes. minutes for, on my channel for an after show, which is linked in the description. There's going to be an after show on Discord as well, linked in the description also. I want to thank the moderators in the chat. Thank you to James for creating this platform. Thank you to everybody in the audience and everybody who sent in super chats and the moderators who helped elevate the discussion. Uh, thank you, lastly, to the, the debaters who are the lifeblood of the show. You guys helped to make everything that this channel is. Uh, Telling, let, it, let everybody know to like the video if you loved it, share it if you want to spread it, and subscribe as we have many more juicy debates coming your way. Uh, our speakers are linked in the description below, so check out their links. Do it right now. Thank you to everybody. I want you to have a great night, and remember to keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable. Have a great night. Thank All right. You. Thank you very much for hosting, and uh, I'll hopefully be back another time. See you. Take care, man. Okay. Well, that went well. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> let's just read the chat for a second. Hold on. Let's just, let's read his fucking chat coping. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get this on screen. Hunter for the win. Okay. Well, hey, thanks. Some people thought I won at least. <laughs> let's see what they say. Hunter, keep your composure. No need to hurl ad hominem insults. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you mad that I called you off for being obviously inbred? Go off, Hunter. Let's be honest, Hunter won. The atheist is triggered. So triggered. Seething right now. I need a sip of my soy to calm me down. Need more mixed race couples? Based. With Hunter's sperm count, I'll, I doubt he'll be breeding anytime soon. Hilarious. These people have no idea that I have two white children. And I have now got a vasectomy. So yeah, no sperm count for the win. Hunter is starting to get lost. Okay. Hunter, you're going to get a swirly potna. What does that even mean? I don't see why saying Hunter's Jewish would be an insult. Ah, yes. I'm sure the chat was saying that as well. <laughs> Hunter wins. Great debate. Rush and I, they lost. Get over it. Hunter for the win. Looks like we got some people in here. Decent job, Hake. You have a long way to go articulating your arguments, but your premise is right. <laughs> in other words, uh, y y I agree with you, but you sucked at the debate. All right. Well, that was honestly really fun. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Yikes. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.